Well, it's certainly good to see all of you here on a cold day. And if you have your Bibles, and I hope and pray that you brought them, turn with me to the book of Philippians again. <clears throat> We're looking at Philippians in um, the night time, but we want to also look at uh, chapter 2, verses 1 to 11 this morning. Philippians chapter 2, beginning verse 1. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, in any vows and mercy, fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, <clears throat> having the same love, being one accord and one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal to God or with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion of the man, he humbled himself and become obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Almighty God, how thankful and grateful we truly are for this day in which you've given to us. I thank you for the way you have blessed each one of us as individuals and how you have blessed our church here. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for it all. But most of all, we thank you for going yonder to Calvary's cross and giving your life upon that cross so that we might truly be able to come to you, cry out in forgiveness, ask you to forgive us of our sins, and then we could truly be saved. I thank you, Lord God, for my salvation. I just praise you continually for that. But I pray too, Lord, now, if there's one here this morning who has never, <clears throat> never truly opened up their hearts, invited the Lord Jesus Christ to come in, my prayer would be that today Today they will give their heart to Jesus, be saved, and begin to follow him and serve him. Thank you, Lord God, for those that are here who have already made that commitment and are now living for you, serving you, and doing your will. Thank you, Jesus, for everything. For it's in your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well... <clears throat> One of the famous comics of uh, days gone by said, uh, I love mankind. It's the people that I can't stand. <laughs> well, people, as you know, can rob us of the joy. We talked about joy before. The secret of joy, in spite of people, is to have a submissive mind. And the great example that you see in these verses of Scripture that I have read to you this morning, of course, is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. <laughs> well, he illustrates the characteristics of a submissive mind. Let me give you some examples that are found here. First of all, he thinks of others and not of himself. You know, his attitude was one of unselfish concern for other people. Our attitude should be the same. You can contra contrast the Lord Jesus Christ with Lucifer, Satan, the old devil, whatever you want to call him. He was once one of the highest angelic beings. 
you know, he was close to the throne of God. But he, that didn't satisfy him. He wanted to sit on the throne of God. He was not satisfied with being the creature. He wanted to be the creator. But Jesus Christ himself, though, on the other hand, was willing to leave his throne in glory, humble himself, come down to this earth, dwell among men, go to Calvary's cross, and die on that cross for your sins and my sins. What an example. You know, Adam and Eve only thought of themselves, and they plunged the human race into sin and death. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he thought of others, and he gave himself for them. Do you realize this morning that, that he came and died on Calvary's cross for you and me? He loved us so much that he was willing to go to the cross and shed his blood for you and for me. <laughs> now, you know what? We are to think of others also. We're to prefer one another. We're to bear one another's burdens. We're to edify one another. We're to help one another. We're to be concerned about one another. You know, we're not to judge one another. And above everything else, we're to love one another. You know what it is? It's a wonderful thing when you see Christian people who love one another. Many cases, though, that's not true. But I pray that you will love your brothers and sisters in Christ, whoever they may be. So the Lord Jesus Christ is our great example. He thinks of others before he thinks of himself. The second thing you see in these verses of Scripture is that he serves. Have you ever noticed as you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it's Jesus who serves. <laughs> He's the one who's doing the service. He's at the beck and call of all kinds of people. Fishermen. You know. Harlots. Tax collectors. The sick. The sorrowing. The blind. The leper. He's always serving. Always doing, you see. For others. Jesus, the Gospel of Mark tells us, Jesus came to serve, not to be served. He came to serve. And you know what, dear friends? You and I are to serve others. One of the things, you know, I've noticed about older people, of course, there's none of them here, but uh, you know what? We begin to come to the place where we want people to serve us. Take care of us. God's children are to be ready and willing to serve as long as they can possibly do it. We're to serve. And the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest example that we'll ever come across. He came to serve. And serve he did. But not only that. He also sacrificed. You know, many people are willing to serve if it does not cost anything. You know, Jesus paid the price. It cost him. He went to the cross. And by the way, if you really truly serve, you'll find out it'll cost you something. You can't just, you know, do it and, and no cost whatsoever to it. You know, it costs you in time, talents, money, whatever. I remember a man that was set aside as a deacon. And uh, when he joined the deacons, he, you know, they said, well, here's what you're going to do. You, you know, you need to take these ten families and you witness to them and you help them and you serve them. Whatever. He said, i tell you one thing, I didn't bargain for this. 
He wanted a name. He wanted a name of a deacon and all of that, but you know, he wasn't willing to serve and to do. You want a God's children, you ought to be willing to serve. And you ought to be willing to sacrifice to them. You know. <laughs> when you sacrifice, it makes you more like the Lord Jesus Christ. It means sharing his joy. Following his example and loving not, not not just one another, but loving the world and the things and the people in the world. Sometimes, you know, another thing I notice about older people again, where they're kind of critical of the world. <laughs> you know, listen to me. We live in this old world. And we're to be the light and the salt of the earth and we need to do whatever we can do to bring God's people and others in to the service of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Oh my, listen. But here's the thing about this whole thing. Yes, Jesus, he serves, he sacrificed. Did all of that. Why did he do it? According to these verses of Scripture that I've read to you, he did it to glorify God the Father. And that's the reason we do it, my friend. Someone said to me the other day, well, why in the world are you still preaching as old as you are? <laughs> Gee whiz, I didn't know I was that old, but I guess not. <laughs> I want you to know this, my dear Christian friends, I do it to honor my Heavenly Father to glorify him. And as long as I can do it, I'm willing to do it. You know, the Lord Jesus Christ, he thinks of others. He doesn't think of himself. He sacrifices. He does it all to glorify God. You know, the whole purpose of Christ's humiliation and exaltation is to glorify God. You remember when Jesus faced the cross? The glory of the Father was uppermost in his mind. Remember what he said in John 17, 1, it says, Father, thy hour has come. Glorify the Son. Why? That the Son may glorify you. That's what it's all about. Now one day, one day we'll share the glory with him in heaven, yes. Our ultimate purpose, though, is to glorify God here and now. Everything you do is to glorify God. If you're doing it for you, to glorify yourself, boy, I'm telling you, you're in trouble. You do it to glorify God. As we serve, as we sacrifice, it will lead to glory. 1 Peter 5, 6 says, Humble thyself under the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. He'll do it. Remember Joseph? Boy, his brothers didn't like him. <laughs> Threw him in a pit. Sold him. Down in Egypt, you know, down there he served for 13 years. Guess what? God exalted him. And he's second in command to the king of Egypt. <laughs> oh, listen. You know, Mo you remember Moses, don't you? Huh? You know what, Moses? Can you imagine... I grew up on a farm. My tended sheep is not nothing, not great or glamorous about that. Moses did that for 40 years on the backside of the desert. I can, you can just almost see him back there running them old sheep around, all that stuff. Guess what? God called him. 
to lead the children of Israel out of bondage, to lead them through the wilderness, to give us the law, to give them the law. All of those things. God exalted him. <laughs> Boy, I'm telling you, I don't know about you, but another thing, you ever, you ever notice where the children of Israel went to the wilderness? Guess who had already been there tending sheep? Moses. God was working all of that out. So when they came back to there, Moses didn't know where to go, what to do. Because he'd already been there, you see. God exalted him. Listen to me. You want to be exalted? God will do it, and he may do it right, you know, here and now, I don't know, but hey, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to serve. You're going to have to commit yourself totally, completely unto him. And everything you do, you don't do it for yourself. You don't do it for Friendship Baptist Church. You do it to glorify God. Oh, you know. One of the things that I find out down through these many, many years, a lot of people, a lot of Christians, you know, they they want to be number one. They want to be a deacon. They want to be this. They want to be that. But they don't want to sacrifice. They don't want to serve. They don't want to do. That's not the way it works. Whatever you do, you do it to glorify God. Remember David? David, by the way, was a shepherd too. He was a shepherd boy. Hmm. God exalted him to be the king of Israel. No one expected that. But you see, that's the way God works. I am so thankful unto God that he doesn't always just bless the rich or bless the learned or whatever you have. He can take an old shepherd boy and make him king. Huh? Some of these guys, you know, uh, debate and all that, you know, I can do this and I can do that and I can do something else and what have you. Don't you wish that somebody would stand up and say, I cannot do anything except that which the Lord God would have me to do. Amen. I don't know where people believe it or not, but I want to tell you something this morning, my friends. God is still in control. Amen. Amen. He's in control of this earth, in control of the United States of America. Right. We may not believe it, but he is. And we need to trust him. And everything we do, we need to glorify him. You know, this thing of having a submissive mind, truly submitting ourselves to the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul here gives us the example is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And that's what we're to do. Not, you know, the joy of having a submissive mind comes not only from serving others and putting others first, you know, or even sacrifice, but knowing this, that everything you do is to glorify God. Rachel, when you play that old guitar, and St. Louis saying, you do a wonderful job. You do it for the glory of God. So many people, so many people, you know, for some reason or another, they forget that. I don't know about you. You know. But we do. And we do that for glory, the glory of God. You know what? We're to let our light shine. 
and we're to be the salt of the earth. And we serve the Lord to whatever it is, however we work, whatever we do. But all of it is to glorify our Father who is in heaven. Now you may not listen. You may not see the glory today. You may not, you know, God may not exalt you in this life. But I want to tell you something. One day, one day you stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and he will say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. <laughs> you know, Jesus, when he comes, he's going to have some rewards with him for his faithful servants. And I tell you something, that'll be glory. That'll be wonderful. That'll be tremendous. Now, I don't know what your glory or what your reward will be, but I do know this that everything that you do, if you glorify the Lord God, one day you're going to see all of these wonderful blessings that are so tremendous and so great. You know what he says here, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall buy of things in heaven and things in earth and things under there. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory, ah, uh, to the glory of God the Father. It's all to His glory. And then He'll exalt us. Now, the only way that you can truly glorify the Lord God is to make Him your Savior and your Lord. Now, that's, that's not hard to do, my friend. All you have to do is believe. Do you really believe? Romans 10, 9 says, If I will believe in thine heart that Jesus died on the cross and that he was risen by the Heavenly Father, You'll be saved. All of that was done to glorify God. Revelation 3.20 says, He stands at your heart's door and He knocks. Now He'll never force His way in. You have to open the door and let Him come in. If you've never truly accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, open the door. Let him come in. Let him save your soul. He wants to do that. <coughs> Christian, I don't know. I don't know why you're serving the Lord. But I pray with all my heart and soul that you're doing it to glorify him. You're not doing it to glorify some preacher or some church or what have you. You're doing it for his glory. Let us pray. Thank you again, Lord Jesus, for this opportunity to be here, to look at your wonderful, precious, holy word. And what an example Paul gives us here is the Lord Jesus Christ himself. One who came to serve, sacrifice. And he did it all to glorify the heavenly Father. Lord, this morning I pray that everything I do brings glory to you. Not to myself. Not to this church, but to you. Thank you. Thank you for giving me that opportunity to serve you and to bring glory to your name. For it's in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ that I pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen.